Hello, I'm Bob Larson, host of the nationally syndicated talk show, Talk Back. My concern about Satanism is the result of research conducted to write my book, Satanism, The Seduction of America's Youth. What you're going to see on this video will be revealing, shocking, and for some of you, disturbing. But it's important information you need to know. In 1966, a one-time carnival performer named Anton LaVey shaved his head, donned a hooded black robe, conducted a devil-worshipping black mass, and established the Church of Satan. LaVey's book, The Satanic Bible, which ritualized his religion, has sold more than 500,000 copies. Today, Anton LaVey is a recluse who grants no interviews and makes no public pronouncements. The affairs of the Church of Satan are overseen by two people, his daughter, Zena LaVey, and Mr. Nicholas Schreck, founder of the Werewolf Order of Satanism. Zena LaVey and Nicholas Schreck are the chief spokespersons for the Church of Satan, and they are the two people you will see me confront during this video. Whether or not you believe in a literal devil, you should be concerned about the plans of LaVey and Schreck to establish a satanically ruled society. This interview was not a debate with my countering the viewpoint put forth by the Church of Satan. The purpose of this video was to divulge information regarding the agenda of the Church of Satan, facts that until now have been cloaked in rumor and contradiction. After seeing this video, I'm sure you will be appalled by the evil teachings of Satanism clearly evident in the statements of LaVey and Shrek. You may wish to use parental discretion for younger children during some parts of this video. And now, the first family of Satanism. Let's come back to the beginning now for a minute. Let's go back to, to 1966, when this whole thing got started. Uh, the suggestion is that your father hit on a good gimmick. Uh, you're always accuse, accusing the church of uh, being hypocritical and using gimmicks, but it, it seems to me that your father hit on a, a very and good gimmick. And, and then there was a lot of showmanship involved. I mean, news on altars and right. satanic ceremonies. Right. Uh, how well, sincere the was the beginning of the church? How sincere? The, it was quite sincere. There had to be public attention to pave the way for Satanism to be a recognized and above-board religion, as it had never been before. So there had to be public attention. You don't you don't have a movement without moving. And so the there, archetype of the devil has always been as a showman. And he all always admitted that. All musicians, all artists, anyone who has a creative way of attracting attention has always been accused of having diabolical powers. Now, but what I find interesting is, although many people like yourself might think that he was only doing it as for, for gimmick's sake and because he was a, a good showman, you also complain that he won't come and be on your show. Yeah. So now, which is it? Would you rather have him be a good showman and come on your show? Well, why doesn't he come out of the closet? He's not in a closet. He's well, living his life he, happily. He, but he is not, I mean, he is fronting he, an organization. Listen, he that, came out of the closet in 1966 so that Anton everybody LaVey else could form, come out but, of the but, closet. But excuse me, but he is not <laughs> making his views, his doctrines, his beliefs. His views oh, and doctrines are open. available no, no, in the Bible. He's not making Bible. them open to the objective inquiry sure of, of, of the press of journalists, sure of, of anyone. No, he's not. I mean, the, the, you are speaking for him, but he does not put himself on the line to defend he's what he believes. He's past that point. He's past that point. He, he no longer has the need to speak to the media in that fashion. And certainly, the Christian media is a dying force. And he's living Excuse, his Wait, wait, wait. The Christian the media Christian is a media, dying the force? The Christian media is now going through its last very extravagant death throes. Jim and where, where, Tammy Baker, where, where do you get these swaggered, from? all of the evangelists are slowly falling out of favor. And as we move into the satanic century, we're going to see Christianity's last gasp. Well, now hang on, just, the, just, excuse me just a minute, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you make some broad sweeping statements that do not have statistical validation. 
Now, while it is true that certain televangelists have had a marked drop in their audiences, overall, the growth of religious media in America is exploding. Can you quote me any statistics in regards oh, to uh, religious radio stations oh, and no, religious television there is stations? Much more. Do you know how fast they are growing no, in this country? There's much more religious media than ever. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, and I think I'm that's saying as an, that's a sign of the death throes of Christianity. You've given up your ideals and now you're joining the devil's ranks, which is to entertain people. <laughs> you are now a part of the media, which is something that the fictional character you base your religion on, Jesus Christ, would certainly not have condoned. Well, now, you, you, you are, you are now using... Nicholas, you throw so many, you know, I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, I want to be polite, but you throw so many little zingers out that are just factually inaccurate. I, I do have to call you, you, you just casually say, this fictional uh, a character, you, you well, let's completely address, disregard let's the, the historicity of Christ. But let's come back to that. As I, most historians would. Well, that's not entirely accurate, sir. Well, well, I, I wanna, let's get well, back. Let's get back to the. Yeah. Well, it is. It is quite accurate. Thing, if all right, you let's get speak back to where the whole that. thing started. Okay. Let's get some facts straight here, uh, and I'm asking you, Zena, because the, the the press has kicked these things around. Uh, Jane Mansfield. Was Jane Mansfield a follower and or a lover of your father? Yes, she was a member of the Church of Satan. I will not discuss my father's private life because I don't think it's anybody's business. But she was definitely a devout follower of the satanic philosophy. Well, his private life has been pretty well discussed in a number of uh, notable books on the well, subject. Well, that's there for people who wish to Okay, well, if you it. prefer not to, fine. But I'm trying to get some facts here. The curse... The story of the curse that killed Jane Mansfield, mm -hmm. that your father supposedly put on someone else and she happened to be in the car. Mm -hmm. well, Any that's truth been to that? published in a number of books and papers also, so do you want me to talk about things yeah, I'm that just are asking. I'm just <laughs> asking you. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm coming straight to no, the there source here. No, there was no curse. There was no curse. So she was not decapitated decapitated because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time because of your father's curse. That's a, I would say she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, obviously. But your father did not put a curse at her request? On, that, that, on that, Sam, that, Sam Brody, Brody. Yes, but not on her. No, not but he her. did put a curse. And because she happened to be in the car with him when he was killed, she got because killed. Because she too. ignored Anton LaVey's request that she break communications with Sam Brody warned her to stay to away from her so she did not so, do but that. your father did put a curse on on, on, Sam, on Sam Brody okay I, I'm just trying to get right. the story straight here Marilyn Monroe what was the connection with Marilyn Monroe that was an affair that the two of them had when they were both very young and were relatively unknown it just so happened that both of their lives took a, off in a direction that you know garnered some fame but mm -hmm. um, at the time that they had this affair, they were both very young, late teens, early 20s. Sammy Davis Jr., he's been pictured uh, right. worshiping at one of your father's altars, wearing a pentagram. Mm -hmm. Was he at a time a follower of the church? At a time, yes. Mm -hmm. Are there any prominent uh, stars today who are followers openly of the Church of Satan, such as these people were back in the 60s? There are, and some of them we already know of. Um, some who? of them. Well, for if you, you want entertainers, King Diamond is a member of the Church mm -hmm. of Satan. Um, he openly admits that. None of these other heavy metal people are. Right. Um, and then there are other actors as well. Because of for, for whom? For example, whom? Well, because of the recent hysteria we've seen, I'm not going to put their there are, there are people in every in field of endeavor, in architecture, well, science, well, excuse, excuse art. me, but why? You, 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 you see, you, you blame it on hysteria, but in fact, uh, if, if they're a follower of Satan, uh, should they not be willing to step forward and say so? I mean... Well, uh, that's what we're embarking on now. Well, we what the 90s process. are going to see is a massive rise of Satanism. People are going to come out of the shadows and reveal themselves as thoroughgoing Satanists. Because what we're seeing now is the death struggle between the Judeo-Christian idea and archetype and the more ancient satanic archetype. Nicholas, uh, for a hundred bucks, anybody can join the Church of Satan. That's what the membership form mm -hmm. says. That's, can, and that's a lifetime membership. They can join the Church of Satan on that level. 
However, to become an active member of the Church of Satan requires that you are already doing something to, to advocate Satanism. Simply by joining, you do not become a Satanist. So, that's just a quick, easy hundred bucks to pocket. No, it's well, a, it is because I mean, I mean, just what what do you get for your hundred bucks? A little membership card that says, "Hi, I'm a Satanist." No, you, Satanism is not like Christianity, a way of gathering sheep together in one place. We feel that the best way to change the world into a satanic arena is by having strong individuals in different areas do their own individual work. So by joining the Church of Satan, you enter into the possibility of going into the higher echelons of the Church of Satan. But if you join a, a Christian church, there is some uh, obligatory relationship that you have, some duties and responsibilities well, the Christian, uh, the Christian do, do you church. not have any duties? I mean, you just you pay your hundred bucks, you get your card, and that's it? You if don't, that's, don't if require anything? If that's all anything? you choose to do. Most Satanists, as most Christians, are not fully committed. Most Christians are not fervent Christians. And you Christians. guys got that problem too. <laughs> Everyone has. When you are dealing with human beings, you have the problem of insincerity. How many Christians are truly Christian? I don't. I maybe met five in my entire well, life. Well, if they're not truly Christian, then they're not Christians. So that just becomes a they, semantic well, can, problem. Yeah. They, well, can you be a, a Satanist and not truly be a Satanist? It's a problem of semantics, as I said. You can say you're a Martian. Well, what does that mean? Satanism is a very broad-based word. To be a member of the Church of Satan is another thing. To, if I say Bob Larson represents Christianity, therefore does Bob Larson represent Jim Jones and Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart and Charles Manson, other people who have called themselves Christians? So you understand the problem. It's a question of semantics and definition. Okay, let's, let's talk about the, the Church for a minute because uh there's so much that I would know and take for granted, and certainly you would know much more and take for granted that the average person has no understanding of. It is a church. It takes that moniker. It presumes that position. And when we think of a church, uh, we think of weddings, we think of funerals, we think of uh, ceremonies, of worship, of its views on everything from medical treatment to uh, Those are all activities that go so under the umbrella of the Let's church find of out what, what goes on in the Church of Satan. Well, one uh, of the main misconceptions is that the Church of Satan is a physical building where, where black-robed people come to congregate. The Church of Satan is an idea more than a building. It is a large network of people internationally who are committed to the ideas of Satanism. We don't all get together and have bingo games and raffles like Christian churches do to keep everyone feeling like they're part of one big happy I, I, family. I have to jump in on you now. I don't approve of bingo games no, and raffles No, I didn't say that you did, but you and understand. I don't think that's truly representational of the legitimate activities of well, Christianity. Well, okay then, if you can say that, most of what you are defining as Satanism is not part of what we would define as legitimate Satanism. Mm -hmm. Just as I will give you the benefit mm -hmm. of the doubt and assume you are a legitimate Christian mm -hmm. and Jim Jones was not a legitimate Christian. You're a legitimate Satanist. The Church of Satan represents legitimate Satanism. And some kid who gets a slayer album and cuts the head off of a cat is I not a legitimate I wouldn't want to be anywhere Satanist. near him any more than you would. All right. Now, let's talk specifically. Marriage. You perform marriages? Of course. What, 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 is a what is a satanic marriage ceremony like? What do they do? It's they obviously don't wear white. They could wear they, they white. Could. There they is, can wear whatever they there want There is no wear. dogma or constricting And there's no obligation. Well, what do you do? I mean, uh, uh, like witches have a hand fasting ceremony. Do well, you have witches, something like that? Well, we white encourage witches. people to decide what they want. If they want a particular type of ceremony, then we'll help them write it. But there is no steadfast, there hard, is no and solid the use, the, use, the proper use of black magic is to find out what will work for you personally and devise a ritual that will fulfill your archetypal desires in a way appropriate to you. A ritual that would work for Bob Larson to get what he wants out of the world isn't going to work for the next person. Excuse me, you said black magic. You uh, just let that roll off your tongue like, uh, hey, easily. a, a black well, magic ceremony tongue, for Satan. Uh, black <laughs> magic, and again it's a question of semantics, 
I would define as the use of will and ritual combined to create change in the world without any restraint on what that change might be. No hypocritical pretending that we are appealing to a higher force. Well, have you been to a, have you been to a satanic marriage? I mean, have the ceremony? Sure. What was it like? I've conducted them. You married people? Sure. In the name of Satan? It's, if you want to use that terminology, so yeah. What did they it do? Would be I mean, satanic. Uh, well, I mean, it varies. I, what I'm to trying to mean, we've all seen different. we've all right. seen Christian wedding ceremonies. Right. So Christian, we, we know the the philosophical frame of reference in which that occurs, but we don't know philosophically what's happening. Well, a satanic marriage is usually they're considerably smaller, more intimate, and because you have a gathering of people who are completely for you, and each one is different from the other. We don't have a set rule as to what the marriage will be. Unlike the Christian church that has an assembly line idea, a certain dogma is read, two people agree to it, you are now part of the Christian community mm -hmm. in marriage. We feel that each individual should form a union with whoever they wish to. But of course, Nicholas, that's because in Christianity there is a we a do not. prior philosophical commitment as to what marriage represents. And so what I'm saying marriage is... Marriage to us, to Satanism yes. in brief, marriage represents what you want it to represent. We believe each individual is entitled to decide what their life should consist of. There is no bond to any supernatural entity. And even yeah, so you decide if you even want to be married Marriage is not mandatory, nor is... Nothing is mandatory. Would you marry two lesbians? I personally do not believe that homosexuality is a natural practice any more than you do. And I don't... Would you marry them if they, they thought it was and wanted to be? I mean, uh, Anton Levain, if the Satanic Bible Satanists, certainly condones it. They would it. certainly be able to marry themselves and consider themselves married. Well, it may sound like an absurd question, but suppose uh, Joe I mean, wants to want marry to... his golden retriever. If we're all animals, I mean, can Joe conceivably well, marry speaking, his dog? Speaking for the werewolf order, which is my organization in particular, we do not feel that homosexuality is a healthy or natural or safe or hygienic practice. But well, you're contradicting do not... Anton in the Satanic Bible. No, what I would agree with him in this sense that I do not prescribe any moral onus against it. What I'm saying is do whatever you want to do, but accept the consequences that come with it. And well, I you're not answering the question about the golden retriever, and I'm no, not... No, I uh, don't. I, I believe bestiality is as repugnant to me as it is to you, but not for moral reasons, but because of natural reasons. Well, uh, but you, earlier you said we're all animals. I mean, an we animal's are, an animal. Well, so animals, what's the difference yeah, animals a don't breed. A wouldn't mate with a Siamese cat. Yeah, only humans, so neither would a human only humans who are so neurotic that they well, break the natural law. Without getting too intellectual here, you do have some Oh, yes, I have a strong differentiation. See, that's something. That, that, in, that in effect, you're not willing to call morals, but in effect, places you as a human animal on a higher rung of evolution's ladder, giving no. you certain no. priorities over what you do to the rest. No, absolutely not. In fact, I believe that animals should be protected by humans, as it is our duty as the inheritors of the earth to protect the ecology, to protect wildlife. And satanic ecology is forefront on our agenda. Mm -hmm. We need to protect the earth that we live on in our natural environment. Let's talk about a worship service. Okay, you have sexual rituals, compassionate rituals, and destructive rituals. According and many to more. Those are three. Well, those are the three those main the ones three. Anton right. Right. talks about. Right. In now, the satanic Bible. <coughs> Zena, uh, these are the three put forth put forth in the Satanic Bible. Describe them. Destruction ritual. What is a destruction ritual? Well, we believe in vengeance. We don't believe in turning the other cheek. You keep turning the other cheek and you run out of cheeks. We feel that if you are wronged in some way, that you take it out with the person responsible, whether that's directly or indirectly, whether that's actually going to the person and addressing the problem or the issue specifically, or whether it's working it out through ritual. May I, may but, I, may I ask, before you go on, <clears throat> have you never had an experience in your life, I certainly have, 
where I felt I was wronged by someone else only as I matured later in life to discover in fact that in that circumstance I was the one who was wrong and it was my own selfish ego that placed upon it the imprimatur of saying I was wrong. We have. So that, but, but what I'm saying is if you, you claim the right to, to get even with anyone at any time, uh, what, if, what if you're wrong? What if you do a destruction ritual? Well, how do you and, and, know that you were and what's, wrong? And what's wrong with your selfish ego? <laughs> I would think your selfish ego is a healthier gauge of reality than some if moral you live, system found well, in I would think it's very blinding because, if in fact, by instinct, we're how could again, that be blinding? we're getting back to our animal natures. We are beasts and we decide from gut instinct whether we have been well, wronged or think, not. Excuse me, you've never done, no, Zina, wait a you've never done anything you an wrong and, and, and thought you, you were right? Let's back up even further. Maybe if what you were experiencing was some youthful ego thing that you think you were wrong, what about? infants that are passed from one relative to another and they're fine and they get to one person and they just start screaming and there's something there that's wrong and an infant can sense it. Is that infant reacting wrong? Is that a wrong reaction? Well I would say that on a, on a much more simplistic level that is the way we react. If we instinctively feel that something is not right we have to go by gut intuition. What if you're wrong? What, if what is wrong and wrong. right? And in our case, we, dis we are making up our reality. We decide what's right and wrong. What you are wrong? letting the Bible or Jesus Christ or whatever God may be Even decide. common sense. I mean, even leaving God out of it to suggest that you can make up your own reality. My goodness, that's what they did in Tiananmen Square. Uh, that's what they did in Germany in 1933. I mean, and that's these, what they're doing in America. In these are examples of people who created their own reality. Everyone, everyone creates their own reality. The thing is, you speak for a consensus of reality which is acceptable. We speak for one which, at this point in history, is not acceptable. Well, so it's just a question of who manipulates the media, who has the most money to put their reality forth. But would you? Pardon me saying that I find a world in which your ability to conjure your own reality as you see it, perceive it to be a very frightening world for people like me. Because you see, I'm guided by some codified rules that tell me what is right and wrong. In your world, I'm not so sure I would feel very safe. Well, you would, you would see that's your maybe. problem. <laughs> you have, in, in the satanic world of the future, Christian churches will be allowed to continue because they pose no threat to us. We don't need Christianity. Christianity needs us. Sure. So we will let it. Sure, sure. Tell fear. that to the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto. Why, we're not going to put you in gas ovens. We're not going to kill you. We just want you to wear oh, no, an armband No, I'm not saying that. I mean, Honest, we just want you... No, no, but, no. But I'm not Hitler, saying I'm a humanitarian. Hitler, don't, get, don't try to whitewash Hitler me. Hitler created a reality. Was mm -hmm. it evil? Hitler was a masterful black magician. Of course, he created a reality. Was it evil? I'm telling you that I don't believe in good and evil, and nor can... Any, can anyone decide what is good and evil? It's all based on historical and cultural values. In my point of view, the Christian religion is evil, in quotes, but, because but, but it Nicholas, is negative. Nicholas, I'm not a Jewish survivor of Buchenwald sitting here with a number tattooed on my arm. Mm -hmm. If I were, well, frankly, I'd be incensed. I'd be outraged at you oh, suggesting. Well, they are, in, they are incensed and outraged. <laughs> They're incensed and you, outraged. You're not willing to say Hitler was evil. Absolutely not, because I'm not what, going to bow down to your level of good and evil. That's so primitive. Pardon? I'm telling what the human race. What purpose would that serve? You want us to give you these lines. I'm that telling have been you, you have to, to decide us. for yourself. No, 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 no. I'm asking. No, no. I'm not. I'm asking for parrots. You want rules. No, you do. You want rules. No, I'm asking you. I'm, I'm asking you just a fundamental question of a social colloquy in regards to how human beings treat one another. A hundred years ago, Napoleon was considered the devil incarnate, the most evil person who ever lived. Now he's forgotten. Everything changes with cultural tides. Morals change with the weather. Well, you now, can't say something is good or evil. You can only look at human behavior 
from a realistic perspective. Well, so yes, if you yes. really want to look at what is evil, the book that you have sitting right there is probably the prescription for the more Bible? evil. The Holy Bible. That's right. And, has I'm, and if you can tell me this is untrue, tell me. Throughout history. Exactly. In the name of more people have died because of the Christian Church in the past 2,000 years of its dominance. It was the Spanish Inquisition. Well, evil? hang on. You, 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 you got and I'm not off saying Hitler here. You sidestepped Hitler. No, let's talk well, well, about okay. Hitler. Let's Whatever talk, you want to talk let, about. We'll talk about this in a second. Let's, let's talk let's, about the Bible. Let's fine, talk let's, about let's, Hitler. Let's, let's talk let's, about everything. I, I, I don't want to misquote you. In fairness to you. it's interesting. I, why do we focus so much on Hitler? Why are you so fascinated with sex and Hitler? I think Hitler this is very interesting. I'm not fascinated with sex and I'm not fascinated with Hitler. No, I'm not. Because you keep bringing up the Holocaust and the Sirachi. I'm sorry, but those for no, those, those types so of, of ad hominem arguments really don't make it in a debate, okay? I mean, that's, uh, that's, not in, that's intellectually well, dishonest, what? and you're a brilliant man, and even you know that. What do you want to get what at, I'm asking what's you, the issue of well, our the, the issue is, and I'm, I'm wanting to be fair to you. I'm not well, wanting I, to put words in your mouth or misquote you. You're saying, are you then saying that what Hitler did to six million Jews cannot be morally quantified and called evil? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely not, nor can any act of any human being or animal be judged good or evil. There is no such that, thing Gina? as good or evil. Yes, I agree with that, because if you look at every war, no matter whether it was the Third Reich or whether it was the Spanish Inquisition or any war, any movement has always caused bloodshed. Whoever won the war always... decided what evil was. And then the victors wrote history. So you always have to keep that in mind. If King, if King George had won the American Revolution, George Washington would be remembered as one of the great evil tyrants of all time. History decides what is good and evil. But now so what if Hitler seeing... had won? If Hitler had won, obviously, your school books would say Hitler was good, everything else is evil. It's so relative that why can't we, but, well, why can't the human race step here. out of this there's primitive million, argument of good and evil? Six million corpses. What about Stalin what about and Stalin? 10 million Ten Polish? Million. Let's talk about, let's what about talk the about Ukrainians? Sure. What, why, is there only one, the Ukrainians. why is there only one Holocaust, one evil? Was Stalin? What was, about in was, El was Salvador? Stalin, there are millions of people dying right now. slaughtering of the Ukraines through famine? A malicious act of evil? There's no such thing as evil. It was a typical act of a human being. And if you want to look at human history from the day that we came from the primordial swamp that creation began in, what you're calling evil is part of human nature. That's part of evolution also. How many and now what, what about what about the millions of people who were killed in Europe, accused of being witches, children and women burnt at the stake? while crowds of good, pious Christians gathered around and watched them burn for a Sunday evil. celebration. I will call that evil. I won't call it evil. I'll say I will it's human call it nature. Evil. I will call it evil, and I will take well, it then. a step further to say that it was <coughs> philosophically the antithesis and totally inconsistent with what the Bible teaches. Well, maybe the problem now, is... Now, 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 hang on. What Nazism did to the Jews was philosophically consistent with the occult Aryan ideas of Hitler. So what I'm saying is... Well, that's what you're deciding, because you're a Christian in 1989. The Christian church rulership in the 1600s would think you were a heretic for saying such things. So all I'm telling you is morality is a relative issue, and nobody can decide what is good and evil. Is murder relative? Murder is absolutely relative. When we sent, when I say we, I mean the American government sent our troops to Vietnam to kill people. Was it evil? Were those good murderers? Are, are there good murderers if they're wearing a soldier's uniform and bad murderers if they're not? Would you, would you say that to the mother of Sharon Tate? Yes, I would say that to you the would. mother of Sharon Tate. In fact, or I... Do you, do you want to let Charlie Manson out of prison? That's a whole other issue. Do it's, you? Charles Do you think Manson, he deserves to be let out of prison? Charles Manson, for one thing, I don't believe is guilty of the crimes he's been accused of. 
But that's a whole other issue. You're kidding. Well, how much do you really know about Charles Manson? How much do you know about, Manson? How much about? Do you know about Hitler? Well, how much I, do you well, know well, about now anything? wait a minute. We, Zena, we, we, Charlie has pretty well made his philosophy known. I mean, he's spoken clearly and openly. Uh, and there's no denial on his part of his role in the Tate LaBianca well, murders, that, me, that he sent those people in no, that house said well, to commit a bloodbath. Where'd you hear that? I can show yeah, you 20 years of quotes. Where you've heard that. Where are, said, are you saying that Charlie Manson, Manson is a rational mind? Are you saying this man is not a murderous psychotic? Is that what you're saying? By your point of view, of course not. Now, you well, see, now, what I find is interesting that, go ahead. is my father is now suddenly lumped into these ranks because all around me I hear now that my father is just like Manson and just like Hitler. And now I'm beginning no, to question. No, I didn't say that. No, you, you don't. Didn't. You, you don't. Many people But this do. is a common opinion. And now I'm beginning to question why. Why is my father so much like Manson? And why is he considered so much like Hitler? And why is he considered so much like even Rasputin, who completely turned the, the Russia upside down? And now I'm beginning to realize that maybe there are two sides to every story, and maybe if you examine the other sides that you don't hear about, you learn something that is a little more illuminating. Zena, I don't find it terribly surprising that uh, there should be some analogies between your father and people like Rasputin. It, uh, it seems pretty reasonable to me in terms of the ideology that uh, he set forth. It, it really is a get yours first, don't look out for the other guy, Machiavellian kind of philosophy. Well, that's right. But also you were referring to other people in history that I was saying you have to consider both sides of every story. There's and another now, side to Hitler? Do you think there's only one side to anything? Guy killed six million people. And that's all you know. And that's all you have no, to I know. No, I know much more about Hitler than that, but in terms of determining his moral place in history. I don't who, have any problem. Now, we're who determines in the same position. His moral place? Who determines it? Who has the right to determine what is good and evil? Well, of course, I would respond from the standpoint of the Christian ethic, but even, even a humanist sitting in this chair. I don't like humanists any more than Christians. You don't like hum humanists either. Humanists, you have to understand this. Once and for all, Christians must know Satanism is not humanism. Humanism is based on Christian ethics and ideas. It just doesn't have Christ. But it has the same appalling ideas about equality, love for everybody, indiscriminate love for all living things. And we oppose those Altruism, ideas. Altruism, humanitarianism, Humanism all and Christianity it. are in bed together. They're the same thing. There's well, no well the humanists might not appreciate that, but I of hear where you're coming from. Of course they wouldn't. Of course they wouldn't. And, and as, far as, pagan, as far as I'm concerned, there's Satanism and then there's other people. Yeah, your, your father, uh, in the Satanic rituals, really uh, puts out some zingers at the witches who want to be white witches. He says there really is no such thing. A witch is a witch is a witch. That's right. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Now, now there's where I do agree with your father. Yes. I, mean, I think you would find that you do agree on a lot of principles with the satanic philosophy. If you clearly understood and looked at it, we are saying that the well, act Well, I don't know if I'd carry that in far. In the sense that the act of manipulating and using the will and using ritual to create change is, by any definition, satanic. And anyone who does that is at least an ipso facto Satanist. So these well, witches that say they're good witches, white witches, nice witches, are as hypocritical as a Christian to me. Your, your father also says in the Satanic Witch quote uh, of psychics mm -hmm. uh, who say, God gave me the gift, these people are playing the devil's game but refusing to use the devil's name. Well, you agree? that's right. Wouldn't you consider any form of divination or, or faith healing or um, Divination reading. is biblically forbidden. I would consider it to be satanic. So we would say that anything that would fall under that category would be considered satanic. And it's not just us. I mean, this has been throughout history. And predating Christianity, there have always been those who have veered from the mainstream, whatever that mainstream was, who have gone out in the wilderness and built shacks to live in to be away from the mainstream and live their own lives the way they feel they ought to. Well, the one thing I can say, you Satanists are certainly more honest than most witches when it comes 
to acknowledging well, the authenticity, you might not like what the we reality have to say, of what we are doing. We're not, we, as I was saying, you might not like what we have to say, but we are honest. I mean, we ha we don't claim to be anything that we aren't. Well, speaking of honesty, before we get off Charlie Manson, do you want to talk about what happened August 8, 1988 in San Francisco? Well, I wrote a book called The Manson File, and I've interviewed Charles Manson. I want to talk about the, the, so, the, I mean, I know the, the, the ritual issue, you clearly. held in the theater. Yeah, yeah. That, Nicholas coordinated that. Yeah. So. yeah. And when the movie showed... The other, let me explain what happened. The Other Side of Madness, a film that was made in 1970, an exploitation film was shown. And, of course, as everyone has reported in the national media, the audience cheered during the murder sequence. Well, this is a bloody murder sequence. I mean, this was when Sharon yeah, Tate's body is slit the... open and her uh, right. child, her unborn child, is removed. And no, blood that, is... that didn't happen, but that's a fine point. But yes, it was a bloody murder. The audience cheered. Mm -hmm. Have Nicholas, you been to I mean, a Friday the 13th movie? Unfortunately, but yeah, Nicholas, you're just sitting there so calm. What do you want me to do? Cry? Do you, what do you want me to do? Have remorse and break down in and tears? This is what I find interesting. What, what is you the proper reaction from a Christian You won't say that Hitler point? is evil. You sit there calmly. You want us... What do you want? You're... What's the right thing to do from the Christian point of view? Should I moan and whine about it? Isn't this, this is, what you expect We're looking at human nature. <laughs> if you can't accept it, that's your problem. I can. Murder is always part of human nature. Is I don't... Wrong? Is it wrong? Has? Is it wrong what to murder? Wrong? Are you going to change it? Is it wrong to murder? Is it Zena, wrong, is it wrong to, to murder? As it says in the Satanic Bible, can you love the blood splashed jaws that rend you limb from limb? Is that wrong? Can you love and feel? You haven't answered me. Is I it am wrong? answering you. Is it wrong to murder? Depends Will on the you circumstances. Answer me and, and no, you didn't answer the question. Is it wrong to murder? What is wrong? <laughs> murder is part of life. We're telling you, we don't believe I mean, in good, evil, right, wrong dichotomy. If, if I come at you and you kill me in self-defense, is it wrong? Should you sacrifice what yourself? No, wait, wait, you're, you're, no, wait a minute. This murder is, can't that's be That's not any, murder. Murder is no more wrong. Well, there, you're deciding. Murder is no murder. more wrong okay, than then you're what? you're deciding, you're deciding what murder what it is. is. What is it then? Define everything if well, you want I'm to debate it. Is there always has Zena, we got 6,000 years of human history to define what murder is. That's right. So how are we Killing going to is a it part here? of animal behavior. Humans do it well, more now, than see, others. I don't really believe that I would need to worry about walking down a dark alley and being followed by either of you Absolutely with right. a gun in your pocket. But, but what you have just said. Here's, let, me, let, let me finish, present let me finish. A scenario what you have to just you. said articulated to the masses particularly in a dysfunctional society where people are filled with all types of anger and rage because of past abuses what you're really doing I think is potentially lighting a fuse. I'm not worried that Look, you're going to pull a gun right. out of your pocket and shoot me in front of these cameras. See, but I don't. But me, I don't know that somebody else might not do that okay, because well, of what you said. Okay, you're not me, willing to condemn let me, murder. Let me answer your questions in three points. The masses. We have no regard for the masses. Satanism is a religion for the elite. It is a religion for leaders. It's a religion for competent people. It's not a religion for anyone who wants to be a Satanist. We don't say welcome the to the homeless, club. The homeless, the handicapped, those with I don't multiple care. sclerosis I may don't not want apply. the homeless, the handicapped. The people That's your in job. Mother Teresa's home you've for the take, dying and the take, destitute, they need not apply. I don't Why want them. You've taken they? that on your shoulders. That's your job. You're doing a great job with the homeless. You help everyone. We're helping those who help themselves, as it says in your Bible. And you can take the weak. No, it doesn't you, say that in the Bible. You can take the decrepit. You can take people who can't help themselves. We don't want them. It's simple. It's very All simple. The you... homeless you don't want to shelter? No, I don't want to shelter people who can't take care of themselves. Why you can't they? You shelter the hungry, the starving, you, you don't want to more. feed? Dina, what? Go ahead, Dina. What were you saying? That produces more of the same. There has to be some change. If you look at the animal kingdom, how is the animal kingdom able to survive, there, there is no, no such thing as homeless. Back to social Darwinism again. 
In the animal kingdom, you preserve what is strong. Well, hang on. You give more food to the stronger animal. Until humans you don't intervene feed the and start killing one. the animals. I, I'm, I'm trying to... There's no welfare in Nicholas, the animal I'm world. Nicholas, I'm trying to remain as academically detached as I possibly can. It's not can. an academically but detached question. what you're saying question. is so absolutely disgustingly outrageous. Now, and just, to wait, me, just wait a minute. Let me... To, you. to Zena, me, it's disgustingly Zena. outrageous Zena. that you would help these weak people who are draining our resources who are causing so many problems, we could be doing positive things in the world. Zena, I want to ask These you, weaklings are taking away yeah, all of uh, our uh, energy that's, and resources. That's... And you've decided to help them. That's disgusting to me. You've never been to a refugee camp. Why would I possibly want to go to a refugee camp? Well, I, Zena, I've been there. You have there. this masochistic uh, love Zena. for She's weakness. And what do you think that'll gain you? Because you women, women, me, women have oh, more sensitive natures. I, want, I, just want to, I just want to make sure it isn't this uh, firm resolve of this if man who's over... If you you're going to get a soft reaction from me because I'm a woman, then you I'm won't. Not. If you were in an Ethiopian famine camp... What would you I would, be doing there? You Isn't that not, the problem of the Ethiopian government to take care of their own people? Why should we be taking care of them? No, I'll tell you what it's the them. problem of. It's the problem <laughs> of a communist totalitarian ideology in the Mengistu government that put those people in the place. A I philosophy, agree with you there. Well, sir, that's a philosophy fine, so that's of there. dialectical materialism, a communist me first no, philosophy. No, no. Oh. That nonsense. is not me, far from what you said. See, no. now, now, just, just okay. wait, wait, let's wait, put wait. it back let's on get, let's, No, level. no, let's get back to the refugee camp. Okay, now. You don't, I want to ask Zena. Zena, you don't want to feed starving people. You want them to die. That's what you're telling now, me. Now, I like your salesman technique of putting words in people's mouths. Well, then, then you speak for yourself. Did I ever say I want them to die? I'm saying, why do they exist in the first would place? Would you feed them? Why would they be allowed would to Would you exist? raise money? Would you do what you could to collect the resources to feed them? Would a wolf raise money to collect resources For to feed For the whelps of the land. A, would, a would monkey you, in the tree? Just, or, just yes or no, would you? I'm using analogies. No, of course I wouldn't. If I did that, wouldn't they become more and more dependent on me and less and less dependent on themselves? No. Not well, necessarily. That? Well, that hasn't been proven yet. No, so. not necessarily. Well, if you look at the welfare state we have and the people who are on welfare, what are they it doing true to that improve there are generations their lot? Of, Nothing. There are generations of welfare recipients. Well, I it's understand not like, it. It's not like just a no, temporary no, 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 thing. No, no, no one's defending welfare. Well, but it's all Here's, the same look, But, but we're, we're talking about you people. Just, no, no, no. We're talking about. We're not talking about either lazy people or incompetent people. Incompetent people. Well, no. Yes, we are. <laughs> sir, sir. The Ethiopian government is incompetent. But the people who suffer the starvation did Why not... do we have a responsibility to help them unless we believe this nonsense in the Bible? Because they're... If we're realists, we don't have any. Beings because they feel pain, because they suffer, because they hurt. Does not the hurt and pain that of isn't another... Enough, that isn't enough reason does not the a, hurt and suffering of another human being at all if touch the, If the human being is worthy so of my attention, I love people who are worthy of my love. That's very few. And what you're saying people is... People who are have, strong, I admire them, I'll help them. I won't help people who are weak. And okay. what you're saying is we have to take the responsibility of other people's actions upon ourselves when we've done nothing, absolutely nothing, to have that result. We didn't do anything to Does that promote. matter? They hurt. I mean, they're in pain. Does it matter? Does it matter? They hurt. I mean, you hurt. You call yourself an animal, but you hurt. You cut your finger. You bleed. You, you, and we you, take you care trip of and it. fall we and take break care your leg. Where's the but social you... agency that helps hurt Satanists? It doesn't exist. We help ourselves, and we encourage the same kind of self-discipline. Well, you go to the fortitude. same hospitals I can. And go let to. me tell you something. When I go to a hospital, they see I'm dressed in black. They look at what they call occult symbolism and they mm -hmm. say, oh, you're a Satanist. I get treated last. That's because well, you... You've, you've chosen to wear the And I'm proud of it. I'm not complaining. I'm hey, saying, well, why don't they look say, at the oh, reality of the world. you're wearing a camel hair blazer. You're a Christian. Why should we... I wouldn't, I'm not asking I for wouldn't help. I wouldn't treat you last. Okay, but I'm telling you I that's treat the you way the world is. I, we don't look for help. Why should we give help to others? This is, uh, Zena, this is your father's book. The Satanic Bible. I mean, this is it. This is the diatribe of the devil that uh, 
has brought together thousands of people in your belief system. Mm -hmm. I dip my forefinger in the watery blood of your impotent mad redeemer and write over his thorn-torn brow the true prince of evil. Isn't that poetic? Do you, do you believe that, Zena? And aren't you taking it a bit out of context? I'm, I'm reading it. I mean, I'm reading oh, it. Well, isn't, isn't I can't read the Holy Bible, and I'll read you something, too. Oh, oh, hey, Zena, you know what I'm reading. I mean, you know isn't the book. Je it's page right. 30 right standard, here. Jesus is the I, true prince of evil. Will you let, let me, me read something from my own book? Well, let me read it first. Oh, okay. and why is that? <laughs> you don't want to... I'm re it, why, I, can't I gaze? I, why can't I choose things to read as you would choose things from your well, book carefully Well, because to I'm read? the person conducting the interview right now. Well, maybe we should interview you. I Good gaze, survival of the fittest. You I are gaze so into the glassy eye of Why your fearsome we? Jehovah. Right. I pluck him by the beard. I uplift a broad axe and split open his worm-eaten skull. Right. Did you know who wrote that? You tell me. Do you know who Ragnar no, Redbeard is? Who? Ragnar Redbeard. No, oh, yes, Redbeard, yes. He wrote this. Well, your father's requoted it here. Okay. Whatever the case. Now, this is violent. This is abusive. It, it, it is. To it's, Jehovah? It's, 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 it's insulting, but beyond the insulting part of it, do you not find any reprehensibility in, in using this kind of language? Mind you, uh, I don't believe that Buddha is God. I don't believe that Muhammad was a prophet. But I would never write something like this about well, Muhammad because, or Buddha. That's because you feel like you have to please everyone. No, because I, I, have, I would have some feelings of sensibility. I mean, you don't feel that there, there's any inciting of any violent rage in people in, in this type of language. Obviously there is. Of course well, I'm asking is. Zena, do of you? Of course there is. Oh, you do believe there is the inciting? There's the inciting of some realization. I wouldn't say of a violent rage. There's the inciting, what I've heard anyway, that people read that and they say, yes, that's the way I've felt all my life. All right, I want, I want to go through the nine satanic statements, and I'm going to ask each of you alternately, if you will, to elaborate on them so that there is no we misunderstanding. It's self explanatory, but. Unlike okay. the Christian Bible, the satanic Bible speaks for itself. It requires no scholars to have councils There's of no Trent to decide meaning. what this word meant or I that word. I wouldn't say that the Bible does either, but let's, let's, let's get to the nine satanic statements, okay? Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Zena? Isn't that self-explanatory? What is indulgence? That you have to be good to yourself before you can adequately be good to others? Is that evil? Is that wrong? Are there any limits on that indulgence? There's another section in the Satanic Bible that differentiates indulgence from compulsion. Okay. Maybe you'd and like self-destruction. Would you, would you not, let's suppose that a pedophile's indulgence were the molestation of children, would you place that under the, this particular heading here of the first Satanic statement, it's if that's his indulgence? Stated. It's clearly stated in there how we feel about children and animals, and you know it. it I'm, I'm asking in, you. It I'm says in the you. Satanic Bible that we revere children and animals above all things. So there are limitations on the indulgence? Of course. There are limitations imposed by your own self-discipline and fortitude, not because you believe what you read from God. That's a very primitive and silly way to go about living. We live because we know what is right for us. You know. Mm -hmm. And to us, you, as it says in this... You've constructed your own individual reality. And I think it works this. a hell of a lot better than the Christian one. Okay. Well, since you talk so much, I'm going to come back to you for number two. Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. I think that does need some explanation. What, what do you mean? I really don't see how it does need explanation. What, what is vital what is, existence? You don't know what vital existence I'm is? I'm asking you. Our life here and now, living for, as I've said, all of the earthly and carnal pleasures. What is a spiritual pipe dream? Looking to some external deity or source for your answers. If something horrible happens to you, you just pass it off and say it's God's will, I'd call that a spiritual pipe dream. Okay. Nicholas, Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. 
look at the world as it really is. Don't delude yourself into thinking it's a way that it is not by calling upon holy cant and scripture as your guide to life. Let's look at the real world, look at the human condition as it exists right here and now. Okay. Number uh, four. Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. See it? Well, I already explained that too in so far as turning the other cheek. Kindness, if you're kind to me, then obviously I will be kind to you. We treat people as they treat us. If someone's going to be rude to us or treat us inappropriately, then they have to expect that in return. We won't waste our kindness on what we would consider ingrates, and that is being treated with disrespect or rudeness. Number five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. And let me flip over here to page 33 and also quote in, in companion to that, quote, hate your enemies with a whole heart. If a man smite you on one cheek, smash him on the other. He who turns the other cheek is a cowardly dog. Doesn't that speak for itself? Yeah. What's your well, point? What would you do? I'm just asking you. I'm asking you. you. These are your beliefs. Down right, Hollywood those. Boulevard and you are attacked by, by a gang of drug dealers for no apparent reason. What would you do? Would you bow pray down to them, them or and would say, you I'll strike pray for them you? back? Or would you try to do something to survive? Well, you, you see, see, I don't. Well, you you're asking. Do you want me no, to answer you the ask question? Me I mean, I'll, I'll be happy questions. to answer the yes. question. So. Yeah. You see, I most certainly, if my life were endangered by someone who murderously or violently were attacking me. Now, some Christians would differ on this. Some would say, kneel and pray. Uh, I'm not one who would kneel and pray. Uh, I don't run five miles a morning for nothing. I'd run. I'd get out of there as fast as I could or fight for my life. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about vengeance and revenge. If you wrong me, we're, however we're, you wrong me, I will give you that same wrong back. But, but if someone is physically striking you with their fist or hitting you with a steel rod, there is no question in anyone's mind you are being wrong. Mm -hmm. But, 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 so. but in the abstract, and this is what we get back to earlier, it seems that you reserve the right always to determine who is the wronged party by your natural brute instincts. Yes, and what I'm do. saying That's right. is that, that the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitful and wicked and who can know it, and common sense tells us that we all have been mistaken at some point in our lives, assuming that we were the wronged one, when in fact we may have been the person hurting someone else. The Bible teaches us to hate our own instincts. The no, Bible is no. a guidebook to how not to survive. No. The hero of the Christian religion is someone who willingly sacrificed themselves. Now to me, someone who willingly dies on a cross and thinks that's a victory is a neurotic person. I don't worship such a God. So if you want to sacrifice yourself, go ahead. We want to live and survive. And you live by returning a wrong back to the person. It's very and simple. I think that's the irony, too, of all the accusations of our sacrifices, whether they're children or animals or whatever. The whole concept of sacrifice is a Christian concept. Because we don't believe in any anthropomorphic deity, there's no need to sacrifice anything for anything. Well, we'll get that. In a, we'll get to that. In, I'd like to come back to that in a moment, if I can, please. And if if I forget, you please bring it up. All right. I want to get through these statements here. Number six: Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Zena. A psychic vampire is someone who drains you of your vital energy. Someone who is constantly looking to you for their support and for their energy. Responsibility to the responsible means if you demonstrate that you have a certain amount of responsibility, you will gain that much more responsibility. Your actions are rewarded by what you achieve or what you acquire, rather than being siphoned off to someone who hasn't deserved them. You know, Zena, before there was any Nobel Prize for Mother Teresa, and really before most anyone knew who she was, I visit her home for the destitute and dying in Calcutta, and I saw the poor people laying there uh, in the throes of death. I saw her comforting them, uh, touching them, 
uh, giving them what food and water they needed. Those, by your definition, were psychic vampires because they could give nothing back. And you don't think Mother Teresa had some ulterior motive no. that she wanted these people to... I really don't. You don't think she wanted them to see her point of view? No. As a matter of fact, no, these, I, I these don't people think could she not. Did, actually. I don't think. As a matter of fact, I because speaking most of, missions or missionaries want to convert people. They want people to, to see save their, souls. Isn't that what Christianity that's is designed to do? That's a presumption I think that you people have made. But well, I think it goes talking, deeper than that. I think that. you've I made think, that presumption. But I think I've visited more I mission think, compounds. I think no, Christ, let me finish. Okay. I think I've visited more mission compounds around this world than you have. And I remember being in a Bangladesh refugee camp some years ago during that time of bloody war and I saw a Salvation Army officer standing by the bedside of a woman who had walked a hundred miles just to get there to escape the fighting and she was dying he could not speak her language she had moments to live and I said to him you cannot convert her you know that don't you he said yes I know that I said why are you doing it he said because I feel it is necessary to offer her a few moments of tenderness and comfort in the last minutes of her life. He had nothing to gain by it. Well, here's, now, let now me she was, let me she say was a psychic vampire let by me, your definition. Okay. Underneath the whole Christian theology and the whole organized structure of Christian dogma is what I feel is a masochistic, almost love and wallowing in despair and death. Christians love nothing more than to see suffering so they can go and whine and moan over it and help people and feel how good they are that they're helping people. It's a very morbid you really religion. You worship a God who's nailed and bleeding to a cross. Everything in the Bible drips with morbidity and death. Eat his flesh and drink his blood. And yet There's you accuse of us morbidity. of being morbid. You, if you want to be around dying and sick people all the time, then you have every right to, but we are not obliged to help these people. And shouldn't that be a choice? Shouldn't that be a, I thought this was a free country, shouldn't that be a personal choice from one individual to the, to the next? Certainly there are going to be people who derive pleasure from doing that. And who are you to say that there are going to be people who don't want to do that? Who are you to say that that's wrong? Maybe it is a greater evil when all is said and done to keep millions of people alive who are not ever going to be productive, who are going to drain all of our resources and create a stagnant world. But to and, com comfort them in the, the hours of their death, to offer an act of human kindness well, that's to... That's why there's people for. like you. You don't want you us want there. You want us to be like that as well? You go hug them. I don't want well, to. Well, if I were that dying person and you were standing over my body, yes, I would want you to be like that. If you were just dying... By, just by being you know, a you know, human being, you don't deserve my love and respect. Pain? Of course. And it, to those I love that suffer pain, I will comfort those who I like, those who I favor. I'm not everybody's friend. Well, I'm sure you, Zena, heard the story from the Bible of the Good Samaritan. Are you familiar with that story? Right. Do you know what it's about? To argue this point is well, just is, going it is, round it is, and round. No, no, because, it is, see, it is an you, important you, argument. You, you, point want because you want your main concern in Christianity is to help the weak. Christianity was designed as a religion for slaves, after all. The no, first no, well, no. historically, if there is any truth to it, the first followers of Christianity were slaves in Judea. Now, is that not no, true? No, that is not true. Who were the first no. followers of in Christianity? In fact, the first followers of, of Jesus Christ were not only common working people, but some of the most eminent intellectuals of the day, such as Saul of Tarsus, who was... Well, Saul of who, Tarsus who was, is the person who recreated the Christian religion in his own vision and rewrote the scriptures in the first place. Well, who he, he uh, caught I'm, on I'm to I'm a I'm sorry, but that's hardly historically accurate. Well, you know, I, I, I wonder... That's Christianity, very interesting, because one Christian will tell us one thing, and another will tell us a, Christianity a different... Christianity is well, fine. what did they tell you? Christianity is fine for people who have this great love for weaklings. Well, we don't have it, so why must we be forced to be a part of your love for all mankind? Well, you certainly must not be forced. Nobody would force you to do anything. I, I, I guess... Can't you I, I, understand I find, that? I find it, no, I find it difficult to accept. You really to want us to put up a fight no, or put up no. an argument. I just, but there's uh, no, 
Go help them. I, I just wonder I how, you've able, how you've been able to uh, psychologically insulate yourself in such a way. I cannot. I mean, it, it, I have not always been a Christian. Mm -hmm. And long before I was a Christian, it was just a matter of, of human responsibility to another creature. Though I may not have believed them to be a creature of God as I do mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. If they were suffering and they were in pain and they were hurting, I reached out to them. How much clearer do I have to make it? A strong animal does not spend all of their energy and time on earth helping every weak animal. You help those in your own pack, in your own tribe, those who are like you, and those who are not like you and who are not contributing to you, you do not have a responsibility to. If you want Nic on Nicholas, simpler that terms, you can, you can say that we are of different species. Let's get to an issue that Zena raised a little earlier, and it's one that uh, I know is uh, a very sensitive one to you. And that is the issue of the allegations of human sacrifice. Now, it's not that sensitive. <laughs> I will first of all go on record as, as being very clear in stating that my understanding of the Church of Satan official ideology, the party line, is that we do not condone we do not permit, we do not practice, or encourage human sacrifice. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. What of those people who do read the Satanic Bible, who do hear your father's teachings, and then practice animal and or human sacrifice they in his name? Satanists. Just because you read a book doesn't make you that thing. How many people have read the Holy Bible, misinterpreted it, and acted on it? Do you know what John Wayne Gacy said to all of his victims? He read the 23rd died? Psalm. Should we now say that John Wayne Gacy is a Christian murderer? It's a well, foolish, sweeping generalization. Okay. Anyone can read a book. Mark David Chapman, who killed John Lennon, read Catcher in the Rye. Should and we ban Catcher in the Rye? Rye? Leopold and Loeb wrote Nietzsche. Let's ban Nietzsche. Where do you well, stop? I, I think there is a serious issue in terms of artistic freedom of expression that you've raised. I also think one has to determine whether or not inherent in the language expressed, the deeds that result from it are oh, philosophically consistent with there it. There are far more violent things written than the Satanic Bible. So you can't tell me that that was written in such a way to promote violence. Well, I'm not saying that it was. I'm just saying well, that I'm, it lends itself by the nature of the language used. Every, well, let's read it. Let's, let's read it. Okay? Let me quote something. Jesus ma, said, ma, let, let I come, me, you can I quote, come you not can, with peace but with a sword. Now, if I'm a Christian and I say, well, I have a sword, I'm going to go kill non-Christians. It's a matter of interpretation. I would say... No, no, that is, phil that is absolutely philosophically inconsistent with the larger worldview of the teachings of Christ. Just, anyone would just know as that. it is with Satanism. Well, okay. Why blame just, the acts I just of a few I have the book. poops on a book? We'll read from this book if you'd like, but let's read this book, all right? Because this one's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Mad dogs are de destroyed. Okay? The fact remains, given the opportunity, they would destroy you. Therefore, you have every right to symbolically destroy them. And if your curse provokes their actual annihilation... Rejoice. Rejoice that you have been instrumental in ridding the world of a pest. He is made to be trampled underfoot. You mm. love quoting that. I've heard you say that before. Have you? Yeah, you really say it with gusto. <laughs> you could be a really good Satanist. You never know who's listening to you when you're on the radio. Well, but, but Zena... It was just that little snippet that someone played for me. Zena, <laughs> you have every right to symbolically destroy them. I'm don't a writer. Have, no, wait, I'm a writer you, and a journalist. I know, I know the responsibilities Bob, of language. If your curse provokes their actual annihilation, in other words, you're only doing this symbolically, but if in doings this curse, you know, putting the pins in the voodoo doll or whatever, if in fact they actually do die, rejoice. Of course. Why is that inconsistent well, I'm with asking our philosophy? You see, your, your father wrote this book. Right. So if what you're saying... If the person actually dies as the result of the curse you put on them, rejoice. You, 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 I, 
believe well, what me, do you I'm think trying would to be, I'm trying to be, like that. give you the opportunity, if, if, if there's an out here and you don't mean that, fine, say so. Of course we mean that. What do you Rejoice. want me to say? Oh, no, he didn't mean to write that. Of course. What do you think we would use a destruction ritual for? It's to destroy, If your wife obviously. is raped and murdered and you don't know who did it and you want to throw a random curse at whoever it was that did it, and if it works, shouldn't you be happy? Or should you mourn the rapist, which I guess Christians mourn the people who kill them too? Because what is Christian, it? I don't know. What, 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 is, what, what response they're, they're, do you want from us? Don't you think that a destruction ritual... That I want for you. I'm See, just you, trying I to... think you seem to have this idea that we toss around these destruction rituals right and left, that we do them every Friday night, with At no random. Regard. We just go I mean, through the phone book and, yeah, and pick Yeah, we just pick people out with no regard for who they are. Don't you think there's a reason why we have that? Sure, you feel, okay. that, you feel that you've been wronged and have a right to get revenge. And explain to me why that is wrong. Explain to me if it's well, something that's so blatantly from, obvious. From, uh, the explanation is that when we <laughs> allow every individual to become the arbiter of his own actions, the rule of thumb of his own conduct, and the determinate factor as to whether or not he is the wronger or the wrong e, then we have millions of individuals running around choosing their own courses of action. You'll never have that. And, and People are have, too lazy to decide that. In a society, that. we have a lot of very hurt, angry, dysfunctional, psychotic people who then, in turn, use this as an excuse for reprehensible action. Granted. And they use Geraldo Rivera, too, as an excuse to kill their mother because Geraldo Rivera a psychotic, Satanism. A psychotic could look at TV Guide and find a motive for murder in it. It's really a, a moot point. You can read any book in the world and find an interpretation that you feel is valid to it. Music. This is your album, Nicholas. It's mm -hmm. called Radio Werewolf, The Fiery Summons. You're pretty good at marketing yourself. That's well, the that's devil's place. <laughs> <laughs> Illusion and showmanship. You mean the devil is, is alive the... and well in Madison Avenue? Of course. Advertising I is think the you devil's and I agree trade. with that. Uh, you're, you, you're a self-described satanic musician. You've heard his music, Zena. What, what does it sound like? You tell me. It's more along the lines of classical music. It would be the equivalent to, it is satanic gospel, I guess you could say. It would be the equivalent of what you have. Except With the word gospel means good news in this case. Good news bad to news. us. It's good news. <laughs> bad news for you. <laughs> what does the music do to you when you listen to his music? How do, does it affect you in a certain way? Is there something about the, the, the mood, the, the ambiance of this? What does it do to you? Well, the music that, and I'm beginning to work with Nicholas on his music, we make music for a purpose. It's not just background music, or it's not just, you know, fluffy, light stuff. It's not, it's this for, is not elevator satanic music. It's no. ritualistic music. It is music it is that by, by even the act of listening to it, you are mm -hmm. participating in a satanic ritual. By listening to so if I put this on and listen to it, I'm participating. But I'm just, you're a listener. Because I'm asking you, how does it make you feel? I it's mean, very stirring. It's very emotionally charged. You can't listen to this music and say you don't feel something because you do. I'm sure you would probably feel either hate or fear or rage or something. I but don't a know, maybe he's a great musician. I well, just say the guy's know. very talented. Right, but I would say that someone who would listen to it would probably feel very similarly to how one might feel if they're listening to classical music that is and bombastic but, and but here's, a song, here's a song called Incubus, which is about uh, sexual cohabitation with demons, a, a human being cohabiting with a spirit being. Right. That's what it is. That's correct. True. So, um, and? <laughs> how does that make you feel? <laughs> well, this is another. I mean, this form is a of woman mythology. cohabiting with a demon. Right. There are succubuses too, which does are that make the you want to do it or what? You I, that's really not, bring that's, it down no, to the I'm, lowest I'm asking level. you. He says it is ritual music that draws you well, into that, its intent. That particular intent. song. I'm asking a point blank question. That Don't particular pass it song on. is Does designed. it make you want to do that, or what does it do? He's named it Incubus. What does it do? It's very stimulating, of course. It's designed for sexual arousal. It's designed arousal, to sexually of course, stimulate. Of course. Prepare one for a cohabitation with a demon? Well, I don't believe in demons. I'm using a mythological word, incubus. It, it's an archetype. It is a real force, but you believe in demons. I don't. You're talking about demons. I'm not. Is this commercial music? 
is this uh, is it going to sell, or is it just Satanists who listen to this, or who, who's going to write the record? Satanists to go and buy it? listen to it, and people who respond to a satanic philosophy, whether they call themselves Satanists or not, listen to it. But it is not intended for the millions, certainly not. You mentioned King Diamond earlier. Uh, King Diamond is a member of the Church of Satan, correct? King Diamond is a metal musician, kind of thrash metal, black metal. Uh, how do you feel about the uh, Metallicas and Slayers of the world? Well, musically, I think they're... I hate rock music. I think rock music's one of the most dangerous influences on young people how so? in a long time. Well, why is it dangerous? It promotes self-destruction, which we're adamantly opposed to. It promotes the use of drugs. It promotes a very conformist attitude, even though rock musicians and... Under the guise of nonconformity. Does it bother you, Zena, that they're kind of using your symbols and your faith and ripping it off to get rich? No, I wouldn't say it bothers me because they're doing what they have to do. It's a sign of the times, unfortunately, but it is... It is but if it gets a kid into Satanism, hey, isn't that it better doesn't, for you? Though. No, it no, really doesn't. No, but it doesn't because it doesn't. they don't All it does is give idea. them a surface illusion which really has nothing to do with Satanism. So it is of no value to us that these people utilize satanic imagery. If we had public I, I, record Excuse burnings, me, I don't, I don't understand why. Because it seems to me... Because that isn't Satanism, what they're encouraging. Drug use, the whole heavy metal aesthetic. What's getting them away from Christianity? Isn't that... that do you no, it really reason? isn't. It really isn't. Because these and that kids... that isn't better either. No, I mean, just, just getting away you're from... You're real ideological purists. Absolutely. We're an elitist organization. I mean, we feel that if people are happy being Christians, that they should stay that way. I'm not interested in driving people away from Christianity whatsoever. If you want to be a Christian, you have every right to be a Christian. We don't want you to become a Satanist. We just want people who are already with us. We're not trying to convert or proselytize. And I think that has not been understood until this point. You don't want to recruit. You don't want to convert. There's only a, a limited amount of people in the world who can truly say they respond to the satanic philosophy or understand it. It isn't for the millions. It isn't for the masses. It is for the rulers and leaders of the earth. It's for people who achieve. That's 1% of humanity can achieve. Now, people are going to move away from Christianity in droves, and they are, but that doesn't mean they're all going to become Satanists. You describe the Bible as an occult book. Mm -hmm. Because... You say you're not an occultist. Christians exactly. are. Christians, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, believe in such concepts as birth by a virgin, angels and demons, the existence of, an etern of a eternal life, immortality. At the end of the world, corpses are going to rise out of the grave and become real again, depending on whether you're a tribulationist Christian or whatever denomination you are. The end of the world is a good thing. As a Satanist, you know the, the dispensationalists and the pre-tribulationists and, and all I, that? I wish I didn't know anything about them, but I'm forced to deal with them, so I know every kind of idiocy that no, is enemy. called Christianity. Exactly. It's an occult book. It is all about occultism. It's God is a spiritual creator in the sky. Christianity is occultism. Satanism says that these gods and belief systems that humanity needs and should have are archetypes, mythologies that make human beings behave a certain way. Everything is a fairy tale. Christ is a fairy tale as much as Satan. It depends on what archetype you choose. Zena, if this new satanic century truly does come into being, uh, if your numbers increase in the Church of Satan, and as you would hope the numbers of Christians would decrease, and then suddenly you are the people of the new social order, describe to me what that social order would be like. Well, I think it would take on its own momentum. We would have, what we would see is nature taking its course, because that's all we stand for, is to let nature dictate what our actions are, whether it's on a moment-to-moment -moment level or a gut instinct level. And Can you we be more specific? To... I mean, what, what, about, what about some of the laws? Are the laws of the land as they currently are changing? The change laws any? would probably become stricter, if anything. Let's look at capital punishment, for instance. 
in a satanic society, a murderer wouldn't last a minute and because every individual would have the right to defend themselves then and there. If someone broke into Vigilantism, your home... Vigilantism? Go out and get the guy? It's worked for thousands of years and it should work again. If someone steals, cut their hand off as they do in Saudi Arabia. That is a much more sane way of dealing with crime than the Christian way, which is to say, oh, you came from a bad background and we really love you, and here, go to jail and be rehabilitated, and then we'll let you out after you've read the Bible enough. I don't have mercy for criminals. I don't have mercy for people who cause strife, and they should be summarily executed and removed from society. In, in talking with the two of you, There's not much uh, lightness or humor. It's uh, because that's th because you're talking. Really, this that's is because all we're. This, you're, is, you're, this is all really. You're talking. It's all to very us. serious. There's kind of a fortress well, if we mentality were, if about we were this. We're dragging you to be thrown to the lions. I don't think you'd see much lightness. Look, you, in well, whether you, have whether you, you are thrown to the lions, seeing it. Come on, now, have you been thrown to the lions? Oh, I would say. Satanists yes, all over the country ha, are being. Am I as throwing much, you to the lions? As much as the society that we live in now is, I'd say yes. So what you're saying is not just necessarily me today, that you, you have a beleaguered stance. See, you don't realize, from our point of view, we are under attack. We you are think, being well, attacked. everyone should be attacking Satanists. What's no, wrong no, I didn't with say that? that. I didn't say well, that. You, but you don't see from our point of view either how we are under attack and we are retaliating. This is our philosophy. Do you think I want to come here to explain these things to you? This we're isn't. being attacked every day by the media, by religious fanatics, and by people like you, even though you claim to be rational. And we're called upon to We have a lot of other things to talk about than say why we're not this and why we're not that, but you constantly attack us and well, slander us. That, if no, you're no, going wait, to say wait. the Satanic Bible is responsible for murder, then you're so you going to have attack, many more Satanists no, I, coming out. I don't out. see that as an attack because I think that I have the right as a journalist to cite quotes that I think well, we're not encouraging but we courage have the right negative to behavior. cite the Holy Bible and you say, well, all these things aren't Christian. Uh, no, all these no things I say that, that, that they are philosophically inconsistent with what is taught, that they are Well, I seem to see this double standard Why is there a double here? standard? Why? There's Jim Jones, the Spanish Inquisition, well, be, because all this kinds book of says, religious and because, holy wars. Because it's very simple. Because this book says, turn the other cheek and love your neighbor. It says so many things. This it also book says, says Hate your neighbor and get even that with book that sucker. Also, that book also Perform says... Perform a, a destruction ritual that also, on him. That book also this says, book says that says witches shouldn't That book exist. says thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. That was the theocratic state of Israel. Well, that it's in that book. That Why don't you take it out? That, I'm not taking it out. That was a civil crime in a theocratic state. It Why are not, you still using it, it the... It had nothing to do with person-to-person... -person I'm talking person-to-person... What about this? Here. What about... But people still read this. I'm talking I... about the rules that govern interpersonal relationships and those the Old Testament. Are, love the old, your neighbor, do unto others but what as you would have them to do things. unto you. This about, book says perform a destruction ritual and if he's annihilated as a result, rejoice. Right, it does. Rejoice. This what is, about the what, things in that book? In the Old Testament it is filled with descriptions of pious religious people sacrificing goats to Jehovah, your God, not my God, but your God. How do you explain that? Why are you still using this primitive book about goat sacrifice, um, the proper way world. to wear your hat when you're in the desert? This has nothing to do with the modern society we live the in. Civil, but it's ceremony. Still why are you using? Look at it as a history book. Culture. What does it have to do with your culture? The new covenant that Jesus Christ established through the cross. That is the message that we now the, bear. That why? Is the why? 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 Why are you? Forth. I don't, you are of European descent, I imagine. Why do you reject the beautiful and pure tradition of pagan heritage which you have in favor of an alien Eastern creed that came out of a desert that has nothing to do with the world you come from or live in? Why? Well, the answer is very simple. That there is one God and that paganism is an attempt of Satan to turn people from the true God. What was it when your ancestors before Christ were pagans? What was God, it then? Were they, they, God were they always, sinners? God always was. And why didn't anyone hear about it? 
they did hear about it. The invisible things of God are clearly seen from the creation of the world, the first chapter of Romans. What about Genesis. all your ancestors who were pagans? Well, are they sinners? Some of my ancestors probably were pagans because they were a product of that culture in its declension well, away you, from the worship of the well, true Well, you God. are a product of Judeo-Christian culture, which has infiltrated Western society. I'm also the and I, is now I'm on also, the way. as you, the product of a personal decision as to whom I would yield my life to and what value systems I would choose to live by. I made that personal decision. And your personal decision, you will admit, is not based on rationality but faith in a book. No, I will not admit that. It is based upon the height of rationality of God as a demonstrably intricate, loving, personal creator and designer of this universe. Well, whether you like it or not, in the future, People are going to look at the Bible and put it on the shelf with Mother Goose's fairy tales and all the other wonderful books that human beings have created to give them some meaning, and it will just be looked at as another book. You have your belief system. It's based on a book written 2,000 years ago. As far as in I'm part, concerned, in part. it has no relevance. And it was not written 2,000 years ago. Was, they've was, revised it. King James revised well, it, took but, out the parts But there is the Old like. Testament that goes back with historical consistency far beyond that. And that's that. the part that advocates animal sacrifice, is the Old Testament. Why don't you throw that part out then? Why do you, have, why because do you worship it, because, a book that advocates because, animal as sacrifice? Because she used the word, the scapegoating was a foreshadowing of the ultimate sacrifice as Christ, our great high priest, came to offer himself as the final sacrifice for sin. Well, there, see, will, the, there the will come a day when people will look at this tape and hear what you're saying and say these were truly the dark ages when an intelligent person like Bob Larson could advocate such insane ideas. The idea that God would love us enough to give of himself for us. I don't consider that to be insane. I think it's the most beautiful idea on the face That's of this it. planet. Because so Santa Claus is a nice idea too, no, but I wouldn't set up a church based but, but on it. But what it does is that it does for me what I could not do for myself. You see, you as a happy. Satanist, right. you can save you, yourself. It makes you as feel... As a Christian, yeah. I cannot save myself. Well, I'm telling you, what if I told you you're free, there is no God, there's no heaven or hell. Bob, you're free to do whatever you want to do. You're a fairly rational person. I trust you. You can dismiss all this nonsense and live your life now. You wouldn't go with that. You'd rather well, still... Well, I have to make... I, I would have to make both a decision of faith as well as a decision of my intellect to determine whether or not that was truly true. You have see, you never I doubted? Think, have you never doubted that this book, the Bible, may not be an accurate portrayal certainly. of the And I've universe? doubted many times the veracity of what I personally believe. And like all people, I'm on my own pilgrimage to find what has theologically been called that ultimate ground of being, that ultimate truth. But as I continue, I'm continuing a pathway paved by mercy and justice and goodness and love, not one paved by vengeance and hate and retribution well, where the me, strong survive. They, they, those are the two things secret, that are antithetical. Then. What you're talking about, love, mercy, forgiveness, peace, that's all theoretical. Not even not if you're any, the recipient of it. Not even not. any Christian is practicing that at this moment. Not Christians all of are cheating on their wives. Christians yeah. are killing each other. Yeah. And the Bible and your church aren't going to change anything about that. Until you look at human nature realistically, you're never going to have a sane perspective on the world. Finally, your in a nutshell, your view of Christ and your view of Satan. So there's no misunderstanding to anyone as to what you truly believe about both. I'll let you go first and see no last. Christ and Satan. Christ is a mythological figure just as the Easter Bunny, Hercules, Zeus, the Tooth Fairy. And if you want to believe that Christ existed and was a historical personage, that is your right. However, I place no importance on Christ or the teachings of Christ except that Judeo-Christianity as a whole has, in my view, been a very dangerous cult that has destroyed human potential for 2,000 years, and I oppose the idea of Christianity. I do not accept the religious validity of Christ, but I do believe it is a dangerous social system, and I am glad to see that it's finally decaying.
And, and Satan? Satan, just as all the other mythological figures I named, is a figure that the human imagination has created as an archetype. If you've read Carl Jung, you know what an archetype mm -hmm. is. An ideal. It's a type, a form, and it has no more valid existence than Christ. However, you can decide a lot about a person, whether they resonate to the archetype of the God of death, which is Christ, the God of self-sacrifice and surrender, the God of the meek and the weak, or Satan, who is traditionally the God of the strong, of the powerful, and of the leaders of the world. Zena, Christ and the devil. Personally, I don't even give them the time that I think the average Christian does. I don't view Christ as anything more than just what Nicholas said, a, an archetype. Um, Satan, it's clearly been stated that we use it in the representative and symbolic sense of meaning the adversary or the opposed or the one to question or the rebel, traditionally. And any anthropomorphic form that Satan may hold, you would be more likely to find in something that's right around us, a physical object, maybe a car. Or no maybe God, no devil, just us. That's it's up what to you. you. Mm -hmm. Just that's, us as that's animals. That's what it boils down that's to, it. yeah. We live in a cosmos that is created by nature, comes from nature, and shall return to nature. There's no judge above us or below us.